One of the things that I mentioned previously in another video is that chemistry really is about the science of change. It's about how substances become different substances. And so that's what I wanted to take a look at in this video is the idea of what kinds of change exist in the world of chemistry. And what I wanted to start off first was talking about really what we need to understand about substances. So we've learned about compounds and molecules and atoms and elements. Um, but it's important to understand that those things are connected by their electrons. And so if we were to look at an actual substance, something like this is a diagram of H2O, or in other words, water. So you have two hydrogens actually bonded, connected to water. This would be a covalent compound because you're dealing with the sharing of electrons and two nonmetals being connected together. Now, when we talk about these substances and the ways that they can change, there's ultimately two categories of change that we talk about. One is what we would call a physical change. And a physical change is when you're dealing with the same substance. So you are changing that substance in a way, but by the time you're done changing it, it's still exactly the same thing. So let's look back at my water. When I'm dealing with my water, if I change this in some way, but don't mess with the actual connections or the bonds, that would be a physical change. So what I wanted to give you an example of is let's say I had a whole bunch of water. And this water might arrange itself when it's cold enough so that it all kind of hooks together. And this would be when it's a solid. In a solid, all of these things are actually connected in a way that when one moves, the others move with it. And so you have a very large structure that's all really held tightly together. Now, what you could do is if you wanted to, you could break your solid, but then you would have basically two separate pieces. And notice that change didn't actually affect the bonds. So that would be a physical change. That would be an example of changing the size or changing the shape, right? You break a piece of ice, it's still ice, it's still made out of water. A change in state would be when you change the temperature or the pressure enough that these molecules can now move differently. So I talked about how this is a solid. One piece moves, they all move. If you heat it up enough, then they become liquid. And what that means is that the molecules still are very close to each other, but they have the ability to actually slide around past each other. That's an example of what you see in a liquid. When you see a gas, what you're talking about is having those molecules very spread out from each other. And that would be what you see in a gas. They have a lot of freedom to move and very rarely would bump into something else. So this would be like turning water into steam. But the key in all of this is I didn't change the actual molecule. I didn't change the way things were connected. Now, once in a while, you can actually dissolve things as well. And that's also considered to be a physical change because that's when you have your liquid, but another substance is able basically just to kind of like fit in between the gaps and still be able to move around on its own. And so those are really the three examples of a physical change. A physical change is one example of how we can change a substance, but we can also create what's called a chemical change, which in chemistry is the one that we actually spend most of our time worrying about. A chemical change is when you actually take a substance and turn it into a totally different substance. You do this all the time. When you breathe in, you take in oxygen. Your body combines it with sugar and turns it into carbon dioxide and water, and then you breathe that back out. That in itself is a chemical reaction. Literally, the, the moment you change any substance into an entirely different material is when you have created a chemical change. And so there are some signs to show you when a chemical change forms. And really, you're looking at things like a change in color, a gas forming, a temperature change, whether it heats up or cools down, light being given off, changes in the properties of the material that you're dealing with, changing in the odor or the taste or forming what's called a precipitate, which we'll look at in a little bit. I think what is probably the most classic example is to think about an egg. Start with an egg, you crack it into a pan and it's a gooey, pretty much see-through 
substance. With heat applied to it, you can actually change it into an entirely different thing. And you change that egg into a cooked egg. And that see-through part now becomes white. If you cook it long enough and you change it so that nobody wants to eat it, then the yolk is going to turn solid. And you, you can actually change that substance into another thing. One of the most common things that people would say is a chemical change is irreversible which isn't necessarily always totally true, but a, a pretty handy method of figuring out if something is physical or chemical. One of those things that I had mentioned in uh, the signs of a chemical change is what's called a precipitate. Now this is something you usually don't see on a regular basis. So what I wanted to do was provide you just an idea of what this looks like. Um, this is when you mix two substances, that are dissolved and they form a new substance that turns into a solid. This is kind of the most classic example. I would actually show this to you if I wasn't like sitting at my house and I don't have these materials at home. But if you mix two compounds, one being what's called potassium iodide and one being what's called lead nitrate, they form this compound. And this compound is called lead iodide and it's insoluble in water, meaning it turns into a solid and it's a very bright yellow. And we call it a precipitate because it actually rains down in the solution and comes out of the solution as a solid. So that is really what a chemical change is. And in chemistry, that's what we spend most of our time dealing with is a chemical change. And the way that we represent this is with what's called a chemical equation. So a chemical equation is when we take substances that we have at the start. And so I'm just going to give an example here. Let's say we had the substance HCl, so hydrochloric acid. And I actually built this so that we can take a look at it. Put it in frame here. And then this substance is going to react with sodium hydroxide. And so those are the two substances that I am going to have react with each other. Now because these substances come before any change has taken place, we call these the reactants. They are the things that are going to react. To represent the actual chemical change that's going to take place, we draw an arrow. And this arrow is basically saying these things that you used to have are going to turn into something different. And in this case, they are actually going to do a special type of reaction where essentially this and this, the two positive parts of these molecules, are going to swap places. And so what you end up getting is H combined with OH, which we would normally call H2O. And then we would also combine this with the other parts. So the Na combines with the Cl to make NaCl or sodium chloride. So essentially what we're looking at in this um, example is taking a molecule of HCl and then reacting it with a molecule of NaOH. This isn't actually what NaOH looks like, but we're going to pretend for now because it's good enough. And they are actually going to become something different. They're going to become H2O and NaCl. And this is what we're actually doing when we represent things in a chemical equation is showing the substances that are going to react. And you'll notice the big difference here is what actually changed is the bonds. The electrons and the way things are connected is what we change in a chemical reaction to show that, or that that's actually what's changing in a chemical reaction is those electrons and what things are connected to. So you actually get different molecules by the time a chemical reaction is over. 
The things that you get in the end are what we would call products because they are produced over the course of this reaction. And this is one of the most fundamental skills in chemistry is being able to use chemical reactions and being able to write them. And in our next video, what we're going to learn how to do is how to balance them. And so that's coming up. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, make sure you ask and see you next time.